was born and raised in this area. Uh, my family's been in uh, Hillsdale County since 1830. The number of different tribes and, and clans that lived in this area, let's say for the last 5,000 years, or maybe even more, varied. There were the, the Miami, the Fox, the We, the Sioux. So the Indians that lived here, the Potawatomi, the Huron Potawatomi, who knows how long exactly they lived in Hillsdale County, but we suspect that they moved down from the northern parts of Michigan and Canada into southern Michigan about 1450. The Potawatomi were the keepers of the fire, and that probably went back thousands of years. But it all evolved into the uh, uh, 19th century when European-speaking uh, white people or Caucasians first came to Hillsdale County. There were French people in Hillsdale County back in probably the late 1600s, early 1700s. A lot of them were trappers, and they had a lot of interaction with the Indians. Besides being an interesting tribe, and they probably fought in more battles than any tribe, there was a terrible war, you know, between England and, and France, and so the Iroquois had sided with the, the British and the Potawatomi were aligned with the French. So there were huge battles in this area because the Iroquois had uh, basically chased the uh, Potawatomi out of this area in southern Michigan. And they didn't return to St. Joseph River. Potawatomi did not return to about 1721. Uh, they were spread throughout the county, but most of them, they had a village down at the corner of Waldron and Squawfield Roads. That's in the southeastern part of Hillsdale County. Bob Bees was a really interesting uh, character and, and, and legendary figure in Hillsdale County. He was the leader of his, of his clan here. Bob Ease was known as a tall, handsome man, well-spoken. He spoke English and probably French as, as well. And they were the same tribes that were here when, when the first settlers arrived in 1827 in the early 1830s. Most of the people that, that came from the, uh, the East to live here came because uh, the federal government was selling land at a dollar and 25 cents an acre. So that was pretty cheap, and so a lot of people could afford that, and there, it was hard for them to buy land back east because all the very wealthy people had bought up most of the land. So there was a lot of interaction between the, the, the settlers and the Indians, and some of it was very friendly. Uh, a lot of the settlers had credit the Indians for helping them save their lives during brutal winters. When they came out here by a, a covered wagon and they had no, they didn't have uh, cabins or houses to live in yet, and some of them were in dire straits, but the Indians were able to help them, uh, as the legends go. A lot of the people that lived here, a lot of the settlers, weren't too happy with the Indians at all. They were glad to see them removed, although that's not what the legends will tell us, that we all got along and everything was hunky-dory, but not true. O over the years, the Potawatomi had signed uh, many treaties giving away their land. Now, Bob Ease was known to never have signed any treaties. 13-year overlap between the Indians being here when the settlers came and the time that they were taken out, and actually they were removed from Hillsdale County a couple of years after most of the Potawatomi had been rounded up and, and uh, taken west uh, to the reservations. And that was in 1838, and that was because of the uh, President Andrew Jackson's Indian removal law. They had passed a law to move all of them west of the Mississippi. That never happened like it was envisioned, but a lot of them did go west uh, to the Osage River Reservation in eastern Kansas. And Bob Ease and his people didn't leave here until around September of 1840. They were one of the last groups to leave. Bob Ease and the, is, uh, the Huron Potawatomi Indians were removed from Hillsdale County partially because a man named Elephron E. Maxson M-A-X-O-N, he had purchased the land where their village was, and he wanted the Indians out of there. So he wrote letters to the governor. Bob Ease, you know, tried to intercede, but he was unsuccessful, and troops were sent into Hillsdale County along with some federal agents. And at, literally in the middle of the night, they gathered around the village of Squawfield, you know, at the point of a bayonet, rounded up all the Indians. Bob Ease at a time, he and his wife lived at Bird Lake and they had to wait a couple of days because she was sick and so they waited so that she was healthy enough to travel. But the ones that did ended up in, in 
basically miserable situation on the reservation. And they actually wrote a letter, uh, all the chiefs wrote a letter to the president at the time complaining about their dire situation. And Bob Ease was the second name on that list. And he actually told people before they left, he says, I don't know whether to stay and fight or, or leave. So he actually contemplated fighting for his, for his home, but that wasn't, wasn't to be.